you know, I would recommend that you have an IP around it and export it to the rest of the world. We, we need to go to Asterix, you know. There is a bard who has a magic potion yeah. <laughs> in the comic. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I think that, that's a challenge. Uh, uh, Mr. Dalal, what is your sort of take on, uh, you know, this? <clears throat> Let me take you back in 1997. Um, privatization had started happening. There were metro licenses, cellular CMTS licenses. Then it was circle-based CMTS licenses. Then two operators per circle. And then there was one basic operator per circle. It was a bidding process. And the criteria in the bidding was that some percentage will be given to those operators okay, who will have 10% equipments, indigenous equipments in their network. I am using indigenous, I will explain it for. Fine, some people won that. Later on, that was done away with. Why? Because the indigenous equipments were not there. <coughs> Made in India is again divided into two sub points. One is manufactured in India, another is manufactured in India by the Indian vendors. <coughs> now, which one is the indigenous equipment? According to me, both. We favor it, but there has to be a minimum requirement of quality of services, the network to the customers as defined by the licensor and the regulator that has to be met with. And of course, there are commercial implications also. I ask people, can we make such sophisticated telecom equipments in India despite knowing the fact that we do not make the registers and the capacitors in India? The silicon. Which absolutely, is absolutely. So we favor the indigenous equipments, but those are of quality of standards. So this is I mean, my input for this. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pram, I'm going to sort of turn it around a little. Instead of saying that, yes, we have these challenges, you mentioned in the, in the morning the three, the three things we need to do. But I would like to focus on one aspect of this made in India, and I think uh, the, the development of technology and the innovation. And I think in terms of R&D, if you can share your perspectives where we are and what needs to be done to, to make this made in India into telecom happen. With your ex immense experience, I'm sure you'll be able to give us good perspective. <clears throat> I think uh, first what the telecom service providers offer is an assured market of five to six billion dollars per year. So that has to be seen as an opportunity by the industry. Uh, the industry which is having cash rich is a software industry of all the biggies starting from TCS uh, to Infosys to Cognizant what have you all of them. I think if only they can set apart 5 to 10 percent of their money aside and then say, I am not going to be a service centric nation, I am not going to be offering simple software services, but I am going to evolve some products for the Indian industry, then the time frame that you talked of 2020 can be brought in little ahead. And that can happen only provided these kind of big uh, companies which are reputed, who knows how the software stacks are getting evolved, who knows how the architecture has to happen. Because today in a product, just making a blade or a motherboard or a chassis hmm. is a sales play. Anybody can do, okay, putting together the silicon. What is required is the software stack to be able to handle that routing, to be able to handle that switching, to be able to handle that optical grooming of large bandwidth. I think it's all around 80 percent of the product know-how is on software. If these software industries come together and then say, look, I am going to give you a base station stack to X companies, then that becomes a great product and a great IPR of ours. And similarly, we can have our own routers. As you said in the morning, Huawei was nowhere, but today Huawei is giving the run for money for Cisco for all the 3.6 and 6.0 series routers. 
I think uh, we are good at software, we are good at architecture. I think the answer that I mentioned to you is these kind of companies have to do. We have great example like this in Tejas. Tejas networks we all support yes. as operators. It's a great story. They make a global quality product, Fantastic. competitive product. We all take it. Somebody mentioned in the morning that there are two companies which make some switch and some optical product in Bangalore, but they are not being given an opportunity. I don't think that is true. I think the industry gives it. But you need to understand the telecom industry when they make a decision on a vendor's product, it is supposed to work at five nines reliability. 99.999 right. reliability. It is not 99% reliability. Which means you should have that kind of architecture, that kind of product selection, that kind of software stability and coding stability. We, we cannot take a product which is not tested and which is not having the architectural strength. That does not mean that we are shying away. We, there has to be a handholding needed. We as operators also have to handhold if there is a great product. We need to test the robustness of that company, the innovators behind it, and, and we are willing to handhold and see.